Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Bates. I'm a mother of little kids and I'm a scientist with a PhD from Harvard Medical School. I've taught cell and molecular biology to people who are now doctors. I don't work for the government or for pharmaceutical companies. I just want this pandemic to be over. Um, many have questions about how the vaccines will affect fertility, pregnancy, or breastfeeding. And um, I felt like my background as a scientist who studies the causes of birth defects and my perspective as a mother who is breastfeeding right now even, um, I could help you make an informed decision about vaccination. So I'm going to share my screen and I'll be talking about how the coronavirus does its damage and how um, the vaccines help us and then address specific cases. So it's easiest to think about how the coronavirus works as it's an invading army invading our body. Its goal is to take over our body to make more virus. Um, the immune system is our defensive army. Its goal is to detect and destroy the virus. A virus can't make more of itself alone. A virus can only make more of itself when it infects a cell. It hijacks your body to produce more of itself and to become stronger. In our body, a virus can mutate to become stronger, more infectious, or deadlier. And to avoid these new um, vaccines. So it's really important that we prevent infection because we're preventing new variants from arising that would threaten even those people who are vaccinated. Different viruses have different coats or uniforms. So here you can see the coronavirus compared to the polio virus and the influenza virus. If our immune system hasn't seen a coat before, it has no defense against it. It can grow, it can grow and become stronger and stronger before we can mount a immune response against it. Once a virus is in our cells, it takes over our cells machinery to make more viruses and release them out to infect more cells. If the coronavirus isn't stopped by our immune system, it can shut down whole organs, like the lungs, which then could not clear fluid or breathe properly. It, coronavirus produces blood clots. It can damage the heart, the liver, the kidneys, and the brain, and eventually kill us. That's why um, so many people have lost their lives to this terrible virus. Our immune system fights back when it detects infection. The symptoms that we feel are the immune system fighting the virus, but the real damage of the virus is to our organ organs. The immune system will raise our temperature, for example, to slow down the virus. Viruses don't like heat. Um, so what helps the coronavirus army take over? Having a coat that isn't recognized, if we haven't been infected by this virus before, our immune system hasn't seen that coat unless we're vaccinated. Having a lot of virus come in at once also gives it a head start. That's where we, why we wear masks to prevent virus from coming in. And having a weaker immune system also gives the virus a head start. Pregnant women are immunocompromised so that the baby can develop. Um, if a pregnant woman is infected, the coronavirus can hurt her more than it would hurt someone who is her same age who isn't pregnant. A, corona infection, a coronavirus infection can damage the placenta and also spread to the baby. And we don't know the long-term effects of a coronavirus infection on a baby. In addition to those threats, we are outnumbered. Coronavirus is in the air just from people breathing, people who are infected breathing. And we can't really completely protect ourselves from uh, an infection. So what would help our immune system in this fight? A vaccine is a warning sign to your immune system to kill the virus before it takes over your cells. It's like a most wanted sign. The original um, vaccines that were made decades ago were made of a whole virus that was injured somehow so that it couldn't infect you as well as the real virus, but it gave a warning sign of what that virus looked like. It was certainly less deadly than the real virus. But as a pregnant person, you couldn't take those kinds of vaccines because even though it was an injured virus, it might still hurt the baby. Um, later vaccines were developed that were just part of the uniform. So you could think of that as like the army uniform hat. Anyone wearing this hat is, dang is dangerous, you gotta kill it but um, it's not dangerous itself because it's just 
the hat. Um, those vaccines worked really well. For example, polio, which crippled and killed thousands of people, um, was completely eradicated when people started taking the vaccine, which was developed in 1955. And you can see that now we don't even have to worry about polio infections. So the size of these circles is the number, represents the number of infections in the United States, and the orange circle represents when the vaccine was developed and distributed. And you can see that all of these reduced the number of infections, but they took a long time to develop. And um, some of these a pregnant person couldn't take because they had actual virus in them. The other problem was the virus or the coat decoration had to be grown in cells. So if you were uh, allergic to chicken eggs, which was the normal source of cells, um, you couldn't take that that vaccine. And those allergic reactions scared people and the people that knew those people. And if it, people don't take a vaccine, it really can't do much good. So scientists have been working on using a new method called mRNA um, for the past three decades, starting in the 1990s. So what is mRNA? M stands for messenger. RNA is a degradable pattern. It's the instructions for making just part of that army uniform. So our cells will produce a part of the coat or uniform as a warning sign of what our enemy looks like. You can think of it as these flimsy patterns that we used to use to make, um, to sew a, a, a piece of clothing. mRNA vaccines can be developed really fast because we can just read the instructions of what the virus um, looks like and then develop something that looks like that. In addition, once it's been developed, mRNA can be produced fast. It only takes an hour in our lab to make a lot of mRNA, whereas it would take days to make um, one of those decorations on the outside of a um, uniform, for example. mRNA can also be adapted fast. When a new variant arises, we can read the instructions for that new variant and scientists can, can develop something that should work against that, but it will still have to go through testing. Then there's also less potential for allergic reactions because there are less ingredients in an mRNA vaccine. It doesn't come out of chicken eggs. Is this mRNA technology new? No, scientists have been working on developing mRNA vaccines since the 1990s. Um, and mRNA vaccines against cancer, the flu, HIV, Zika, and rabies started clinical trials before 2017. But it takes longer to conduct those trials because we're not in a pandemic against any of those um, diseases. So less people are affected and less people enroll in those um, trials. So it takes longer. So what's in an mRNA vaccine? It's really the most natural thing that it, we could possibly take. It's a tiny lipid or fat droplet exterior that protects that mRNA um, pattern to make part of that enemy uniform. The lip lipids or fats have fancy names that are on the ingredient sheet, but they're just fat, like olive oil, for example. Um, there's also salt and um, sugar in the vaccine. So what happens when we get an injection? Our immune system is amazing. It produces antibodies to neutralize the viruses. Antibodies cover the virus so it can't infect cells. It just bounces right off. The virus can't replicate if it can't get into our cells, so the virus can't turn your cells against you. The antibodies also present the virus to cells and enzymes to teach our um, other immune cells to destroy or eat the virus. So I de demonstrated that this is like a Pac-Man because I'm a child of the 80s, um, but they're called dendritic cells and enzymes that, that will destroy the virus. So you're actually making weapons that will destroy the virus when you take a vaccine. And then we're teaching our immune system to kill the cells that are infected by the virus. And that is what the vaccine does. So it protects you from your cells um, turning against you. How is this different from other medications that we think about? So thinking about Tylenol or ibuprofen, um, these would distribute throughout our body and stay in our system for several hours to help bring down a, a fever, for example. 
And this would treat the symptoms and help us feel better. But if we took Tylenol to treat a viral infection, it's not hurting the virus at all. The virus is still going around destroying our, our body while we feel better. However, vaccines are teaching your immune system so that it cures and prevents the infection. It is your immune system that is the actual medication. It's destroying the virus, the cause of the destruction. The vaccine is also just restricted to the injection site. It's, um, that's where the warning sign is going to be made. And then the mRNA vaccines are going to be broken down and recycled within two hours after the injection. So are these mRNA vaccines safe? Absolutely. The, there have been tests done in animals and in humans to show that they're effective and safe. Um, this is showing that the Moderna vaccine was tested in monkeys and showed promise, and the Pfizer vaccine was also um, had a strong immune response in animals as well. And then in the clinical trials, clinical trials included over 30,000 people, and they showed that both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines protect 95% of people from even mild COVID-19 symptoms and protect everyone from severe COVID-19 or COVID-19 related death. And now these, these vaccines have been in, administered to over 50 million people in the United States. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine was recently approved and it protects everyone from severe COVID-19 and COVID-19 related death. Um, it also completely um, protects over 70% of us from even mild COVID-19. You can trust this clinical trials data because it was collected in over 100 hospitals by hundreds of different medical professionals who had no in vested interest in the results of the clinical trials. Um, and then that data was reviewed by five different boards that had no vested interest, got no monetary gain from the results of the trials. Um, that includes a safety monitoring board, independent scientists, career scientists at the Food and Drug Administration, and the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices and the C CDC. So should I take the vaccine if I'm pregnant? Um, let's think about this together. High fevers are harmful to developing babies. High fevers that last for a long time can cause birth defects. In fact, even getting in a hot tub can cause birth defects because those high temperatures are um, hurtful. COVID-19 causes high and enduring fevers and you wouldn't necessarily know that you were infected before you were. So you couldn't protect yourself against that fever. So a vaccine prevents you from getting COVID-19 and getting the fever that's associated with it. So a vaccine is the best way to protect your developing baby from getting, experiencing your fever and experiencing infection his or, him, his or herself. You can also take Tylenol if you start to get a mild fever as a side effect of the vaccine. Um, and that, that mild fever wouldn't cause the same detrimental effects, but you can take Tylenol to bring down the fever. These recommendations came from Harvard Medical School and also the University of Michigan and um, so, uh, two different publications, one in um, the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology and the other one in this vaccine journal. Um, can the COVID-19 vaccine affect my fertility? Absolutely not. Women became pregnant during the clinical trials, even though they'd so signed documents saying that they would not get pregnant, that they were trying not to get pregnant during those clinical trials um, because you, you weren't allowed to be pregnant during the initial clinical trials. Now pregnant women and breastfeeding women have all um, taken the vaccines and we have had um, good effects. So the vaccine is a warning sign of what the coronavirus looks like. Coronavirus itself has not impacted fertility. And so the vaccine can't either because it's only a tiny little part of the coat of the, of the virus. So if the whole thing can't damage your fertility, neither can part of it. Let's think about breastfeeding. So I'm currently breastfeeding um, a little baby who was born during this pandemic. Um, and 
I really had to think about this because I had to think through the science of it. So one way I think about it is that the vaccine actually stays in the cells near the injection site. It's not going to travel through your bloodstream and into your breast, breast milk. Um, the mRNA vaccines are broken down within two hours after injection. Um, and then your, your body's gonna produce antibodies against that, um, that little part of the coronavirus coat. And so the antibodies that you make can pass through the breast milk and potentially could protect your baby from coronavirus too. Um, one thing to think about though, is that it takes energy to make antibodies and to build an army defense against the coronavirus. And it also takes energy to breastfeed. So eat plenty of food, take up those calories and rest. Don't plan on doing a huge workout the same day that you get vaccinated. Um, just protect yourself and your milk supply. There are side effects that occur with vaccinations of any kind. Um, and that's because the side effects are the sign of your immune system mounting a defense against the virus. So the side effects that, that are normal are soreness, such as your arm can be sore. That's what happened to me when I got my vaccine. Um, you can also experience fatigue or mild fever. Um, and they would show that your body is building a defense against the virus. You can take Tylenol to help those side effects go down. It's kind of like morning sickness. So morning sickness isn't telling you that something's wrong when you're pregnant. It's telling you that something's right. Your baby's growing well. That doesn't mean that people that don't experience morning sickness don't have healthy pregnancies, but it does help you know that, um, that the pregnancy is going well. So think of these side effects as morning sickness for when you're pregnant. They're annoying, but they're not damaging. Okay, so a vaccine gives us a choice. When we don't have a vaccine, the virus can invade your body and it can use your body to hurt you and to hurt the people that you love. The virus can make new variants that can infect anyone, even people who are vaccinated because it can mutate when it's infecting us. But when you take the vaccine, you actually destroy coronavirus and save the people you love. So thanks for listening and I, um, I'll give you, uh, 